My goal for today is to talk about the exam. Uh, so I don't have any particular agenda, although I can slide through the to the study guide. This is posted where all the other uh, old exams are. Um, so is, is, was was anybody in 319K with me? Okay. Would you say that my exams? were completely different or very similar to my old exams? Yeah, I would say that, you know, when you get to be 61, 62 years old. Uh, now, were they identical? No, okay, so you, you probably will find no exact uh, question such that if you could get it down in your study guide, all you have to do is write it, you know, look it up. Uh, you probably won't find any question that I've used before. Uh, if you do, it was just inadvertent because you get old and senile at the same time. Uh, it was not my intention to reuse any questions. But on the other hand, the style and, 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 and approach to the kinds of questions I ask and how I ask them and what I mean when I ask them, uh, I, it's, I wouldn't just study old exams, um, but I would certainly Make sure that you have seen at least some. And in particular, let's see, I, hope I got a couple of them here. Which one? Here's 14. Uh, this, is last, uh, this is last year's exam. Uh, and now I'm at the, I'm at the back, back of it. And uh, your last two pages of your exam is virtually identical to this, except wherever it says port B, it says port A. Uh, so, uh, and wherever it says T4, TM4C12XX, it's going to say TM4C123. And so, uh, so that lets you know when you're making your study, when you're making your, your, your crib sheet, uh, you don't need to write down the current gain of a PN2222 because it's going to be there, but you're going to know to look for it. Um, now, it doesn't tell you what the direction register means, but at least tells you that there is a direction register. Okay? Um, it doesn't tell you what the pull-up resistor means, but it tells you that there is one. Uh, so that was the GPIOs, and in the GPIOs is uh, regular input-output and the edge-triggered interrupts. Okay? That's what's in there. And then uh, since there is interrupts, uh, priority matters. Okay, and so uh, if you need access to the priority for a uh, edge triggered A interrupt, there it is right there, right? Uh, if you need access to a timer zero A interrupt, there it is right there. If you need access to the cystic priority, there it is right there. Okay, so these are the registers into which I might ask you. Um, yeah, there's the... Um, there's the enable bit for, for, the, um, for edge triggered A, right? That's the nested vectored interrupt enable. Uh, this one is a weird one, right? This one, you write a one to this register. It doesn't disable the other ones. It only enables the one that you've got. And I got to take off the G because you got no port G. That's a typo. Or H, you don't have any port H either. I can see that those are typos. Uh, well, last, last year, the, one of the choices of the processor actually did have a port G and H, so that's why they're in there. Um, uh, so there are three interrupts that, you, uh, that you're going to have uh, responsible for. Uh, edge triggered on port A, uh, cystic periodic, and timer 0A. And so here's the cystic registers you should know. Uh, you should know what each of these bits mean. Um, and uh, this is there twice. I can see, I can save myself some space. You can see this register here is there twice. There it is here, and there it is down there. I'll, I'll get rid of that one. Um, and they're the, uh, they're the registers for the timer zero. So again, the bottom, the last two pages uh, for your exam will be here. Any questions on this? <coughs> Otherwise, otherwise, the directions for your exam 
are identical to this. Obviously, it's not, not 2014, uh, but you are going to have one 8.5 by 11 uh, crib sheet, which you may write on both sides. Um, uh, otherwise, it's closed book. All right, let's go to the study guide. All right, uh, two-sided. Uh, I think if somebody else does a crib sheet and all you do is Xerox it, uh, there's no, they're probably not going to be good. It might be better than doing nothing, but I think if you're sitting down studying with somebody else and you're working out, should I put this on the crib sheet? Should I put that on the crib sheet? Okay, that's appropriate. But if, if your lab partner does all the studying and hands you a Xerox crib sheet, uh, obviously writing the crib sheet is actually, uh, I, I did that once in the class. They really hated me back when I was young and stupid. Uh, I came to the exam, I collected the crib sheets, and I dismissed everybody. And I graded the crib sheets. I won't do that. I promise. I won't do that. Because... The guy who says, I didn't need a crib sheet because I memorized it all, has obviously just got trouble. <laughs> that was a bad idea. <laughs> but I do think, I mean, I, I will come look at them because, you know, I'm curious. Uh, to, I, I can tell a lot about a person by looking at their crib sheet, by the way. I can't. Uh, or not, as the case may be. But, uh, all right, let's... Uh, um, so there's a crib sheet. Uh, there is no calculator, okay? And so when you're designing a circuit, you're going to go, "Hey, John, how do I, how do I, uh, um, how do I do the math?" Well, the answer is even if it, I think the math is easy enough to do with, you know, sixth grade, <coughs> multiply and add and divide, uh, but if you haven't didn't actually pass the sixth grade uh, and needed your calculator, you can leave it in equation form. And if the qu you should always give me the equation. Don't just give me the number. Um, but if you set it up right, and even if you calculate it incorrectly, uh, set it up right. Uh, do you remember what your 10th grade teacher told you to do? The most important thing you learned in 10th grade science was what? Uh, just, uh, do you learn something in 10th grade, if you're in the state of Texas, uh, that it's going to be with you forever? Okay, chemistry. First time you took chemistry. What did your chemistry teacher teach you? Okay, no. Significant figures. Okay, uh, just a little. Significant figures is interesting, but not the, the dimensional analysis. Okay? <laughs> dimensional analysis. I promise you, your, your uh, chemistry teacher mentioned it. And he or she mentioned that it will always be valid, and I'm backing her, him or her up on that. Okay? So it'll help you when you write an equation, right? To, to make sure your kill ohms match your ohms, to match your, your volts, to whatever. Okay, so, all right, so, you know, it's, uh, if, if, if you need to know what 2 to the 12th is, you may want to write it down, otherwise. Um, uh, fixed point programming. Um, I'm going to scroll through here and then you're going to stop me and say, uh, what does that mean? Okay, that's, and then we'll do some examples. Okay, so um, the basic essence of fixed point is, okay, clear, control, C, yeah. The es essence of fixed point is the the value is equal to an integer times a constant. Okay? So if I have a value one, an integer one, and a delta one, delta is a constant, and if I add volume two plus integer two times delta two, and if I have volume, something, value 3 equals integer 3 times delta 3, how do I calculate V3 equals V1 plus V2? Right. And the answer is it's just algebra now. Okay? All I'm going to do is solve. I'm going I'm to substitute these three equations into here and solve for I3. Okay? 
That's the essence of, of doing fixed point math. Questions on that? This can be involved shifting or dividing the eyes and combining them up because it has to do with the <coughs> units. Remember? What is the unit of I? I always will have a unit, and its units are what? It's dimensionless, okay? The value will have a unit, say, centimeters, and so will the constant, or whatever the thing is. But the I is going to be dimensionless. And that's how you're going to, you're going to deal with the fixed point questions. All right. Um, there will be some programming. Um, There'll be some programming, there'll be some interrupt service routines, there'll be, you know, FIFOs and, 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 and um, rituals and debouncing and all those sort of fun stuff. But I expect you to know what constant, uh, volatile, and static is. These all are very context dependent. Depending upon where you see it, it means something else. Okay, so you should see. Um, what those mean in the context. Well, we have to write any oh, do we write any assembly? Okay, so uh, the answer is you need to, if you look at the kinds of questions that you're going to see, okay, okay, where's the, yeah, okay, is you need to understand assembly, okay? And we're going to understand assembly for a couple of reasons. Uh, this one, for example, uh, lets you understand the context of, of uh, how fast it runs. Okay, right? This is how fast it runs. Is this minimally intrusive? Uh, you're going to have to count the bus cycles. Uh, sometimes uh, there is a assembly for you to understand what the word static means uh, because you need to be able to look at what does uh, what is the first two lines of us what's the essence of the first what's the essence of the first line of assembly here that does what this is a 319k question but this is something you need to you're not gonna have to write it but you can have to understand what that means so let me tell them what the first line of this of this compiled what does it do Yeah, but well, well, yeah, yeah, talk to I don't want to know the details. Put something in R1. But what's in R1? What is in R1? An address. Okay? This is doing a global memory access. This is the first step to access an I.O. port or a global variable. Okay? Because it's a, you know, a risk architecture, we can't, there's no direct addressing mode. Uh, uh, any, any leftovers from the 9S12 days here? Anybody took 319K with the 9S12, you're, you're in trouble. Uh, in the 9S12, you could get out of global variable with one instruction. Right? You could go load with the address of the global variable. Okay? Now, what I need this guy to do is to learn enough 319K on the, on the cortex to know that to get out of global variable or to get an I.O. port takes two instructions. The first gives you the address. And the second does a read or write to the data. So again, the uh, uh, so because this will be this will matter in terms of where the critical sections are, right? Because if I read the address, that's not critical, because the address never changes. The, a critical section has to be between memory accesses that access uh, uh, instructions that access global memory. So you need to be able to look at this assembly code and identify which instructions read and write global variables. Because the critical section will between, will start at one of them and end at the other. So which lines here access global variables? So if you just count them one, two, three, four, which lines is a read or a write to a global variable? That's what you got to be able to, to identify when you see this code. See him? <coughs> Which, I'm, I'm looking for a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, okay, fine. Two, you see that? That's a, at the end of two, R1 will have the value that was in the global variable put on. Okay? Where's another one? Four, okay? R2 has got the value. Give me another one. 
The last one. There's one more. Right? One, two. Yeah, I got the mouse. Okay. That one. That's a, that's a global variable. That's a, access to a global variable. <coughs> you know, that's the that's the that's the plus plus, right? It's going to read from the global and add one and store it back. So that one as well. Those are all access to a global, right? But I'm not going to make you program an assembly line, but I need you to understand this. Yeah, question. What's that one with the LSL in the middle? Okay, LSL. Okay, fine. Uh, LS in the middle, not not in the Oh yeah, she, she you know. Um, okay, Th this how, where this matters. Okay, well, what, what, could somebody tell them what LSL stands for? Logical shift left. Logical shift left. Okay, and I told you that uh, the difference between uh, uh, decimal fixed point and binary fixed point is what? You use decimal fixed point when you have a problem related to who, what? Humans, because we're decimal beings. So that's we got ten fingers and ten toes, and I don't know why we don't have base twenty, but we got base ten because we got ten things. But computers love what? Binary, and this is why computers like binary, and that is shifts are free. This is actually doing a shift and a and an add in one instruction. I don't care. But it is shifting and adding in the same. It's shifting, okay, he said it's shifting R1. It's shifting R1 by 4, by 2, multiplying R1 times 4, adding it to R2 and storing it into R0. That's what it's actually doing. But that, that is not that is not a 445L question. That's a 319K question. Yeah, question. So what is the uh, well, if you read the uh, thing very closely, it's the number of cycles each instruction takes. Uh, it, it says it, it says that in the directions. It's the it's the number of instruction, a number of bus cycles it takes to add to to implement that. And you can sort of see when it does a when it does a memory fetch, it takes two cycles. When it doesn't do a memory fetch, it only takes one. So I could ask you the maximum latency on an interrupt service routine with this data. Right? The, the jitter caused by an interrupt would be one bus cycle. Because you got some are one, some are two, and the jitter would then be one bus cycle. Did I answer your question? Well, there's have to be a branch instruction, so it to be all fairness. Okay. The, okay, so getting back to So the question was uh, do I need to program in an assembly? The answer is you need to understand it, but you're not going to have to. All right. Um, you're going to have to know, you know, there'll be rituals. Uh, you'll set up the ritual for cystic. You'll set up the ritual for timer 0A, periodic interrupt. You'll set up the ritual for, um, what did I say, the, the, the port A, either as an edge triggered or as a regular GPIO. So there'll be, uh, there'll be uh, examples, potentially, of those types of programs. Um, You'll be using cystic either to do something periodically or to do uh, to measure time. And again, I could do the same sort of thing with cystic that I do with periodic interrupt. I love my FIFOs. Um, yeah, keep periodic edge triggered interrupt. Like I already said that. Um, some of the debugging features that we've had: dumps and profiling and mailboxes and semaphores and FIFOs. And okay, those are pretty straightforward. The harder ones. Our interfacing. Uh, I don't want you to use. A, does anybody know how to debug a uh, debounce a switch with a capacitor? Yeah, don't do that in this class. I'm, I promise you, I'll take off for it. <laughs> you can, but I'll take off for it. And why am I going to take off for it? It's expensive. It takes up space. I mean, if you do it right, I probably won't take off for it. But. Chances of you doing it right may be low. <laughs> because you can't put a capacitor on a digital input, by the way, because it puts you in the transition range too long. You've got to be careful. I didn't show you how to debounce with a capacitor because I never want you to do it. But some people think they know how to do it. So they're wrong. <laughs> well, you could use an op amp, I guess you could do it. 
but I don't want to, I don't want to teach you how to do it with the capacitor because the answer is always more expensive than it would be to debounce how software. with software, right? And we, we talked about two different ways to debounce the periodic interrupt and the uh, the, the edge triggered with a with a time delay. Uh, but I, you, you do have to hook up switches, uh, two ways, uh, four ways to hook up a switch. This is a 319K question, by the way, but you interface the switch, the four ways. <coughs> Oops, that's not it. What are the four ways to interface the switch? This is circuits. Mm -hmm. I promise you it's not very hard circuits. Positive logic and negative logic. Okay, so in positive logic, it's probably the way you did it, right? You probably did it this way. Up, oh, that's going to be negative logic. Okay. What are the other four? Well, what's a negative logic look like? The thing I drew and I just erased it. If I if you if you if you did put these in here and the word says minimize cost, these are the wrong answers. By the way, how do I reduce cost? How do I do it cheaper than this? I got two things. I want to throw one of them away. I use the internal. Use the internal. Um, use the PDR here, and for this one, I do it this way. And I use PUR here. All right? It's cheaper. All right. Questions on that? Yeah. Okay, the question is which is up and which is down. Uh, if, you, if you were to describe this signal here, right, uh, you would describe the resistor as which direction relative to that line, up or down? It's down. Okay, so this is a, this is, this is a pull, this is an external pull down resistor. This is the internal pull down resistor. They're the same circuit, it's just the resistors over here inside the, inside the circuit. Uh, and this one is the pull up resistor, and that's again an extra. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Any more questions on that? That's an easy one. Let's go. Yeah, Okay, so LEDs. I don't know, it's not too. Could give you an LED question. Do I need to show it to you or can I go on to the harder ones? All right, let's do the transistors. Uh, it's 2222, right? Let's do the 2222. Uh, I promised you when I taught this stuff, okay? Oops, erase. When I taught this stuff, uh, I simplified this in what two ways? Uh, those of you who've had 438, this is the part, this is the part you're going to find offensive. Those who haven't found it, don't worry about it, because we're only going to talk about two modes here. Right? We're going to talk about off and saturated. Okay. So I should have. So in off mode, off mode is blue. In off mode, what I'm going to do is create a, a VBE of zero. That's off mode. No current, so that makes IB is going to be zero, which makes IC equal to zero, and the thing is off. Okay. Uh, in the second one, all right, is, okay, uh, black, yeah. The second one is we're going to make VBE 
greater than some parameter called VBE saturated. And so how do I find that? Right, that's... Okay, right there. So on this particular quiz, uh, the number I gave you was 0 0.6 volts for, for VBE saturated. So if VBE is greater than 0.6, you're in saturation. Okay. See that? All right, so uh, I'll tap. Um, the other thing about 445L is that the circuits that we're going to interface are really pretty simple. Let me let me start with a new sheet. Clear. Uh, if this load is like a speaker, it's going to look like that. And this is the output. This is the digital. And we're trying to find R. Okay. So to find R, I will, I will find the current. Right? The current through the collector is going to be V power minus the VBE saturated. So again, there it is, 0.3. See that? That's the number I'm going to use on this particular quiz, assuming I have this transistor. Now, I might give you that one. You know, I might do that just to, you know, just to be fun. Um, the tip 120, we're going to learn, we're going to use that one when we get to the, uh, to the lab 10. But I might give you this one because this is actually a Darlington. I don't know. I could, I could give you that one and actually it's the same equation. Nevertheless, let's just keep going. So, so this is going to be um, uh, 0 0.3 volts here. This is what it is. And now I need to, you know, I divide by the, um, by the, Whatever this, res whatever the load resistance is, and that was your 32 ohm speaker, right? That was your 32 ohm speaker, and that tells you the amount of current that's going to flow. Okay? And then I'm going to go, okay, what's the base current? The base current is equal to this divided by the gain. And I'm going to go back over here. There's the gain. See, I'm going to, you notice how. There, there are literally hundreds of parameters in there, but I was really way too easy on you guys on the exam. I, I, could be, I could be mean. I could add more lines to this table for you to ignore. Those are the three that matter, right? So that's 100 in this case. Um, So yeah, that's 100. So now I know the base current. And so now I need to choose the, this guy here is, uh, again, output high is going to turn this on. So I take the VOH of the processor, and I look at the voltage drop across this resistor, which is the VBE saturated, right? So minus VBE saturated divided by this R, okay, that's the current that will actually flow through the, that's the act, that's the base current, okay, but that needs to be greater than or equal to this thing I just calculated right there. And so now all I got, right, like I got, I know this is a parameter from my from my question, this is a parameter from my thing, uh, these guys here are parameters of the transistor. This guy here is a parameter of the processor. And now I'm just calculating that. Questions on this? I'll make you do this, by the way. This is not an option, you're doing this, yeah. 
Where are IV and IC on the diagram? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. He said, well, label my things. Yeah, I, I didn't learn that in 10th grade. Probably learned that freshman year, sophomore year of college. Should always label everything. Okay, give it a color. Let's make it green. Can you, can you read the green? Base current is the current into the base. The collector current is the current into the collector. And obviously, plus minus is the VCE across the collector emitter. Is that right? I already labeled. I already labeled V. I already labeled VBE. Are we good? Yeah. Uh, this be a study guide. It's it's in the book. It was in the lecture notes. Did this over and over again. All right. Um. What can I do a little bit different? Uh, I could give you a 100 milliamp LED. I suppose I could do that. Yeah. And sort of combine them. OK. Clear. If this were a, a 100 milliamp LED, I could, it would be something like, oh, not green. There might be some of these on the old exam. Uh, you first choose R2. You, in saturated, you know what this is going to be. Uh, you got the diode voltage, and so now you, and you got the diode current, right? So you have the set point of the di of the op of the of the LED, and so now you can choose R2 to be. 3.3 minus VD minus VCE over ID. Okay, and now I got ID is going to be the same thing as IC, right? Because that's the current, and then I just do the other one, but it takes two resistors. <coughs> okay, we'll talk more about driving motors when we get to lab 10. But I could ask you an LED interface right, with a transistor. Do you remember when to use this versus uh, versus this? I mean, this is the this is the output. Here's the output. When do I use this one versus that one? Yeah. So if, if it's if if I is less than eight milliamps, I can do this one. If I is greater than eight milliamps, I'm going to do that. This will be a Lab 7 issue. When you want that beautiful blue LED that we got in the kit, right? The beautiful eye-piercing blue, because everybody loves blue. That, that, that bad boy is 20 milliamps, and you've got to do it this, this way when you get to Lab 7. But if you want the little cute little yellow one, 1 milliamp, 2 milliamps, you can use that one. All right. All right, uh, here's where you're in, um, here's where, where you're, uh, you're at a huge disadvantage, and that is we just added Wi-Fi, and so we haven't had a long history of old Wi-Fi questions, so now you've got to think like a Valvano and say, after I did Lab 4, what should I have learned? Because right, Lab 4 was kind of Mickey Mouse, all you had to do was take the code and change a few parameters, right? Lab, unless your thing didn't work, Lab 4 should have been easy. Uh, let me know if it wasn't. It was most <laughs> easy. But what, what should you have learned? And that's what's written here. Okay? I think you should uh, know what an IP address is. Not, you don't have to memorize which ones are local. You should know that some are local and some are public. That's, a, that's something you should You don't need to know which ones are which. But you should know an IP address is... 32 bits? Maybe I could ask that question. And what does it represent? Right, what does an IP address represent? And now you raise your, you raise your hand and, and, and ask for an answer as I go through this list. So you should know what an IP address is. Also, all IP addresses aren't 32 bits. It's what? All IP addresses aren't 32 bits. Okay, fine. IP, IPC4 
32 bits. He said, there's a new one, it's more bits, and I'm not asking about that. <laughs> Sorry, he died, Dylan points out that uh, in the old days, old man, he's called me an old man, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might pay him this month, I might not, no. <laughs> No, it's got to get bigger. I could ask you why it could get bigger. That's a good question. Why is this obsolete? Why is the 32-bit uh, IP address obsolete? It's too many. You know, it's all, that's only four billion, right? Or whatever. Four, two to 32 is not a big number. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, what, what is the what is DNS? What's it used for? Not not how do I call the function to make it happen? I don't care about that. But what is it for? What is it? What does it mean? And what is it used for? Right. That's the mapping between the weathermap.org and the and the IP address for it at that particular time. And why do we need it? It's because the IP addresses are allowed to change, and nobody wants to memorize phone numbers, right? And it's it's sort of like your uh, you, when you send email to somebody. Uh, you don't write out their email address. What do you do? You type the letter J and hope your computer is smart enough to find the email address for that guy. Right. So that's the idea of this domain name. So, um, which one did you use in lab? TCP or UDP? TCP. You use TCP. So uh, what is it? Why did I use TCP versus UDP? Um, should know that. Um, what's a socket? You could ask what a socket is. Because you opened one. You closed it. What is it? It's a, it's a software. It's a software construct uh, into uh, into and around which you transmit TCP packets. So it's your portal through which there's. Uh, and it turns out there's two sockets when you transmit a TCP packet. You know where the other one is? It, it, you, you, which were you? The client or the server? You were the client. So you had a you had a client socket that you that you send a TCP packet through, but where did it go? Into, a re into the server socket. There was another socket over there that collected the, so you, you, the, the, it was a connection socket. There was a socket, well, no, was, there's a connection socket is different. There were sockets on both sides through which the TCP packet was transferred. Uh, why? So I don't know why, it's kind of a stupid question. But what? It's probably a better question. And then you did a you did two client server applications that had that pretty dancing little uh, animation. Uh, you might want to look at it to see what happened as 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 uh, as that client server ha happened, right? Because right, there's actually two types of sockets on the on the on the on the server. Yeah, and there's two types of, there's only one type of socket on the client, but there are two types of sockets on the server. And they were used for different purposes. Uh, that happened, it sort of happened in the background, but you probably should at least know what, 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 what went on. Um, yeah, I could ask you a question like, uh, uh, what ha what would you, did I have to close the socket? All right, whatever, okay. So, any questions on lab four relative to this? Yeah. Yeah. Speed. Uh, streaming. Streaming audio is a good example of UDP. I, if you miss some packets, you, you ever watched a video and it gets weird, right? It, it loses the middle and it catches it back up. You've lost some packets. Nobody cares. But when you're sending money across the internet, you know you don't want to lose any packets. Yeah. When you send an email. Now sometimes the email doesn't get there, but you know it didn't get there, right? So anytime the reliability is important, we're going to use TCP. Uh, anytime speed is important and we don't care about reliability, uh, it's sort of best effort. Send it out. You don't really know whether it got there or not, but you don't care. Is that something like, say, Netflix or somebody would program in? That they well, you, get to, you as a designer are going to choose, right? Because you, you called the function. You set it up as a TCP packet. If you set it up as a UDP packet, you're telling the internet, please send me my thing. If it doesn't work out, I don't care. Nobody, nobody's died, you know, I don't care. So it's a speed versus reliability issue. And that's about all I know. What's going on? Um, it's, uh, uh, here's, 
Here's some new things. Uh, if, you, if you look at the old exams, I haven't asked you yet uh, um, a, what um, the probability mass function is because that's a, new, that's a new lab. But I asked you in lab, so I could ask you in the quiz. Um, uh, I almost always, if anybody looked at any old exams, I almost always ask this question. In other words, what do these mean? How do I use them? Uh, can you connect up this to that? Okay, that's where those, those inequalities were worked at. Uh, well, I don't know what else is in here. Yeah, I could. I, don't, I will not ask you to prove the central limit theorem. But I might ask you what it means, or, or how does it apply to how does it apply to embedded systems? Could I ask you that. Um, uh, this is comes out a lot, and I told you this when we were doing it. Uh, uh, you should you should know. Um, you know you should know that the. Uh, you know, the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J omega C. Uh, now, I probably, in all fairness, won't ask you the inductor one until we do lab 10 because that, you know, you should know it, but I'm probably not going to ask you the inductor questions on this quiz. I've asked it on other quizzes uh, because they led, their lab 4 was a motor interface. Uh, and so I might have asked the inductor questions. But uh, getting back to the capacitor, we talked about the capacitor being a short and an open. Uh, we talked about you know the step response of these circuits. I could ask you this. So if this is the input and that's the output, it's the input and that's the output. What is the, what, what what's the step response of those circuits? Um, Oh, well, sometimes we ask a differential equation. I could ask that. Because they're going to ask it on the interview. Uh, when you go get a job, they're going to ask you those questions. That's why they're on, this, on your exams, because they care. But then, then uh, be careful studying old exams, because the, your labs have changed. Right? So for instance, you did not do a motor lab yet. And so there are motor lab questions on the on the first exams of some, so don't study. So if you're going to look at old exams, um, the way I would do this is I would go, hey, boy, I don't know what const means. So I'll look up that question. Or I don't know what static means. I'd look up that question. Or I have trouble with critical sections. I'll look up that. What does buffered I.O. mean? I'll look that up. What's a desk check? I'd look that up. Um, you know, so you can see I asked a lot of debugging types of questions. Intrusive, non-intrusive, uh, which interrupt occurs first, uh, writing cystic interrupt, writing uh, edge-triggered interrupt code. Again, you're going to do port A, by the way. It's going to be on port A, whereas some of these are on port B or port F or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I did, yeah, see, fixed point math. You see, I already did one of those. And we talked about... Uh, yeah, and solid state relay. Solid state relay is actually a diode. So the solid state relay is the same thing as an LED. So LEDs and speakers. I uh, probably won't ask you motor questions. Um, yeah. Yeah. There we are. Um, is there a particular thing you want me to talk more about? Yeah. Okay, now did they? Okay, let me think about it. I know, but was was there was it in any of the labs? Was there a FIFO in the labs? <coughs> FIFO, FIFO, yes. I I will often ask a FIFO question. Uh, so, what Youngjin asked is it since I already writ, wrote the exam, I am going to tell you what it is. Yeah, probably. It's probably a fair statement. For instance, if you wanted to know if you if switch is touched, right? I, right? Uh, let me know when a switch is touched. Okay? 
your interrupt service routine is going to set a flag somehow with the bouncing that flag is called a semaphore okay that the flag that gets set when something interesting happens is called a semaphore I mean I might refer to it as a semaphore but Hopefully, I'll. Um, so, yeah, you, uh, semaphores, yes, because uh, I've asked, uh, I've got two switches. I want to know which one happened first. So, I'll set flag one if switch one occurred first. I'll set flag two if switch two occurred first. Those are both semaphores. Um, uh, a mailbox is a, a mailbox is a flag and data. So, again, something happens, the flag is set to let you know you have new data, and there's a global, these are both global variables. You know, flag is a global variable, data is a variable. That's what, a, this is what a mailbox is. Uh, I can't tell you whether or not I put it on their exam, but I meant to leave it in as a, as a to-do item. Anything else you question about what, this is only like uh, one more minute, I guess I can ask, is that on the test? Is that not on the test? 